understand we have received grant from Department of Science Technology to develop our product further. We have won many awards. One of them, this second MPTA, which was won exactly on this day last year, and that really inspired us to go forward much faster. Uh, Tai Pune, if, uh, if some of you might be knowing, is uh, supports entrepreneurship uh, all over the world. We are proud to get their mentoring, their support for two for last two years. Next, please. Uh, we have been covered by media, especially Sakal, many times in Pune. Uh, again, the problem they are, uh, they are seeing this everywhere. Even in some Marathi newspaper, they see that students have to uh, speak English at home. They have they can speak Marathi, but at, in the college and at business. They have to speak English and they have covered us many times. A little bit about our team. Uh, before starting words, my two and a half years back with my uh, uh, co-founder Sandeep, I worked as a scientist for Tata Research Development Center in Pune. And, uh, I have many research papers and, and patents. With that innovation mindset, I looked at this problem and uh, tried to uh, be innovative in solving this problem. Uh, before this, I am a graduate of College of Engineering Pune, COAP, from Mechanical Department. Sandeep, again Pune University alumni, uh, he has 8 years of uh, developing software products. His last job was sales PLM. Both of us left uh, our uh, cushy corporate jobs, high paid jobs to start this company together because we thought that yes, this problem we can solve at a much larger scale. And uh, I know we make our uh, families also proud because we are solving a fundamental social problem. Uh, today we have 12 employees, most of them uh, work on the delivery side, making sure our courses are working, our trainers are working, our students are completing our course, as well as uh, three employees develop the software we use, two employees work for curriculum development. We have around 45 certified trainers, all from different backgrounds and experience, so, so that depending on the student level and the type of course we are taking, we take their help in delivering the course. Next please. Yes, so I'll talk a little bit about our courses and how they work. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I, we have understood that different types of students in different institutes have different problems uh, actually and uh, different expectations from our course. So, we start with assessment <coughs> of proficiency level so that we can exactly judge where they stand in listening, reading, writing and speaking uh, and we publish a report for every student so that the student also understands and the trainer also understands where they lack. Uh, about in, uh, these are the various skills we try to improve. So for the students who, uh, who, who, who they want to improve their confidence while communicating in English, all of the students have learned English in their schools but they are not confident in communicating on stage, in writing. That is what we call English communication skills. Especially with students who want to get a private job immediately after, especially engineering and management students, want to make sure that they clear interviews better, right? So many of them fail at HR round, the human resource uh, personal round, or group discussions. So we solve that problem in practicing job interviews, resume writing, group discussion. Then um, uh, many times engineering and MBA students want to be corporate ready, right? Right after their graduation, they want a high paying job. But they, uh, what corporates are complaining at, they are too naive. They are not matured enough. So we cover that part in some of the courses which are corporate readiness, which we call corporate etiquettes or email writing. So depending on the student type, we change our course by the way. Um, soft skills is one thing, just English communication is not enough, but there are many other skills apart from the hard skills our colleges anyway give, um, which groom and develop their personality. And uh, we have also seen that many colleges are coming to us for developing their faculty, the way they communicate also, so that faculty is, uh, are the representatives of the college in the outside world to the students as well. So we have take, taken faculty development programs with respect to professional communication. Next please. Uh, it's a broad outline of how our courses work. We use something called as blended approach. We use mobile based learning as well as trainer based practice. Okay, so left is the mobile based learning and the right one is practice based workshop. What happens is that today students are well aware and ready to use mobile phones and they continuously do it anyway for 2-3 hours every day according to our surveys. So why not use those 15 minutes of time every day for us because English cannot be taught in a day or even an hour, right? So uh, our trainer's time, we split it 
we do that every uh, uh, week for some time. We cannot give more time for our trainers, right? But what about every day if we give them 10 minutes, 15 minutes lessons? So we have developed our own platform which works on Facebook Messenger. Essentially what happens is that students get lessons from us which are audio visual lessons. They, it's like 5 minutes lesson. One quick lesson for a particular topic. And then they solve quizzes. So it takes 10 15 minutes. If a student has more time, he can he or she can solve two or three lessons. And whenever they can, many of our students solve during their travel time, by the way, which is anyway getting lost, right? Or waiting for someone, or even during their lunch break. So they, they kind of listen to good English, they read correct English a little bit every day, so that over two, three months they show improvement. But this alone will not improve their communication, which is the speaking, which is the main problem. So our trainers take such practice based workshops in colleges or in universities so that our trainers don't have to teach any grammar or anything because it's already covered online. So our trainers directly start with practice activities, making students speak. And a thumb rule we use is that trainers should speak 20% of the time and 80% of the time students should speak. And you know, if, when I walk in, I generally go to my uh, workshops uh, as an observer. When I walk in, my thumb rule is that trainer should be sitting in the classroom and students should be in the front speaking, right? Because uh, that is what the problem we are facing, that students are not ready to speak. They haven't got an opportunity during their schooling for speaking. I, I myself is from Marathi medium school. I never spoke in English, right, uh, during schooling. That is the problem. I never uh, spoke with my parents in English, I never spoke with my uh, teachers in English. So, the, during these 10-15 hours of workshops, student, every student has to speak continuously. And we take batches in a group of 30 people only, so 30-40 maximum. So that every student gets opportunity to speak multiple times during even 2 hours workshop. So that happens in the practice base. Course, 2 months course, it starts with assessment. Uh, so that we get to know where the student level is. We can personalize the online course. If a student is very weak, we give them more grammar. If a student is intermediate, we give them more speaking uh, tips. For mobile learning platform, we personalize the course. So students do a little bit every day. Then they get workshops with the trainers as well as assignments with the trainers so that they get personalized guidance, they get improvement, they can ask questions in the workshops. Uh, to the institute, we give them dashboard and tracking so that how many students are completing, how many students are not completing and we give them weekly reports so that we, we get help from the professors as well to make them to make students complete the course. And at the end of the whole uh, course, we give a detailed report to the institute which goes into their records as well. Next. Yeah, so benefits to institutes of, uh, from uh, uh, implementing such courses is that making our students corporate mm -hmm. job ready. By the way, government jobs have, don't, don't, don't exist anymore, right? I mean, very few of them. So we have to make sure that our students are ready for private jobs. Even small companies nowadays, even my company is small, we have to make sure that our employees are speaking correctly, right? So we have to make sure that our students are job ready so that after uh, they get out of uh, to the real world, that is found, uh, they find themselves. Uh, because we have used heavily online component, our impact on your busy academic schedule is very less. We don't expect too much time to be given. So for a 40 hour course, classroom time is only 15 hours. Okay, in Solapur University as well. 25 hours students spend online, but we get to know whether they are, they are spending that time also. And we, we uh, give the report to the institute whether students are doing it or not. Uh, we have a standardized curriculum. So even if we have a, a, a many colleges, many trainers, we make sure that all trainers are teaching in a similar way. This standardized curriculum, we make sure that the trainers are trained by us and, uh, so that the quality is, uh, we make sure that the quality exists. And it's a process driven approach. We, uh, we tell you what exactly in the way in which uh, course is going to happen. Even the dates are finalized for the Solapur University for the next semester. Uh, the dates are finalized, which trainers, their email IDs, everything is process driven from our side. So that you don't get you know, additional headache because you are already busy understanding your curriculum. Um, next. Yeah, so now I'll talk about how we conducted course here at Solapur University. Next. It all started with uh, an AOU uh, back in July uh, and actually our discussions with uh, Dr. Uh, 
Suryoshi had started one year before that. He, he evaluated our course, went through our curriculum in detail, a proposal, I had a presentation in front of all HODs, and then this MOU was signed with Vice Chancellor. Uh, uh, sign, uh, Vice Chancellor. And uh, uh, what we have done is that we have two credit cores in the two year MSc syllabus. Next. Yes, so first is for English communication, the confidence and the speaking and writing part of it that is uh, being given for first year students uh, here in MSc. Uh, what happens is that we focus on speaking correct English and confidently. So correctness is also important and speaking confidently is also important. It, it has 20 years of uh, 20 hours of online course and around three full <coughs> days of workshops which are spread over three months. Right, so that trainers get time every month, uh, students also solve some online component during that month, so that they get questions, they have and they show uh, gradual improvement over three months of curriculum. And we have assi assignments and feedback. In the same way, these first year students go to second year, now because they are MSc students, the university has uh, asked us to take technical communications course because many of these MSc students go for PhDs or they go for uh, such jobs where technical communication is required. So, in the technical communication for the second year, our focus is writing a report on a technical topic and presenting it confidently. Again, it has 20 hours of online course for presentation report writing and uh, three work uh, three full day workshops and assignments so that they one they get one report written well and one presentation so they go through this particular curriculum as it's a skill by the way so they uh, do this for one presentation we are we are sure that they do it uh, for other presentations as well thanks this is like a snapshot of our messenger works okay it's an automated messages which come to students and today's world students like chatting. And by the way, three years back when we started, even chat, I mean just WhatsApp was there, Facebook Messenger had just started. Now it's in hands of every student. You can go back to your college and ask your, your students, 90% of them are already using it. So they like this already. Uh, one of the students said 10% didn't have mobile phones. Actually, uh, and the grade that she had and then uh, got an access to a mobile phone and completed that course, that is, tremendous. Otherwise, this can work on web based on laptop or PC as well. For those unfortunate students who cannot afford or even the college here in university, they have, uh, they have uh, uh, allowed the students to use the uh, uh, computer lab for taking this course. So, to, you know, today internet and uh, access is not a tremendous issue, right? It's very cheap to get a mobile phone with internet access and many of the our students already have it. So, we use that time to uh, help them improve. Uh, in, uh, I was covering assessments, so we use such parameters for assessment. For speaking sections, we go for grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation and fluency, the tone they use, the way they present, the, way, the body language during presentation and what content they are speaking. Similarly in writing, we go for how, you know, the objective of the write-up, is it being satisfied or not, the, or, the organization of write-up, such parameters we use for assessments. So at Solapur University, we use these parameters. Uh, next slide. Uh, and then we got such graph that we conducted similar assessment before the course and after the course. Okay. So uh, as we, uh, some of you might not be able to read that, I'll just read it out for you. What we saw is that this many uh, around 80 percent were on grade D in our assessments in the pre-course. Most of them improved to C level. I'll I'll just make it a point here that we see. We see very good improvement. It's not like they become extremely fluent after that. It takes more time, right? That's why we are having two courses in the curriculum. Some of, uh, in, in one engineering college, we have three courses in the curriculum, right? So they, it takes time to improve gradually, but we saw one grade improvement at least in the skills. And that's what we expect them to do. That, okay, improve this in this semester, improve one more in next semester. That's how we uh, expect them to do. But we have seen tremendous improvement now. Many of the students have, have ability to at least come up, speak in English. Many of them have started speaking among themselves. Yes. These will have the ability, they have the body language, confidence, and have ability to make students speak. Okay, so it's a more of a facilitation model we use rather than a teaching model. Because the English is something which cannot be taught, but actually we have to make them use English. 
So they have the ability to make student come up. If a student is shy, if he is afraid, then they have the ability to guide that counsel that student. And such abilities, we, we check the trainers for such abilities. So these were the trainers we used last semester for solar photography. Thanks. Um, just, I'm just showing glimpses with photos and videos. Uh, thanks. Uh, so we make sure that you know uh, trainers and students bond well. Even if they meet once a month, they sort of chat with each other on our Facebook group. They can ask questions. You know that bonding is very important. What happens in communication? Once I feel comfortable, I will start you know talking to the trainer in English. We uh, we create an environment where we don't laugh when students make mistakes. Right? Uh, generally, we are in an environment where everyone is looking at us and you know, we are adults now, even our students are adults. They have that ego, right? So people start laughing after they make mistakes in English. Obviously, they will have that mental block. So with these trainers, they get into an environment where, okay, it's okay to make mistakes, but it's not okay to not try, right? So they keep trying, they keep trying, and we see that improvement. So such bonding, we make sure that uh, trainers are bonded well with the students. Thanks. Yeah, so I, I'll just show you uh, one video of a trainer explaining how the classes happen. This is a cellular structure, that is the macro view. We will study the micro view, that is the writing, how to write each section. We shall study the correct way to write a report. How do you present your data, what you have learned, what you have researched, how do you present that data, that is going to be the part of this uh, presentation. Over here, I will just be a facilitator. I will just be a facilitator. I will teach you how to go about things. Learning is what you do here, but implementation is something which one has to do on their own. Here you will learn that you will be 10% of the actual implementation and the writing set knowledge will come from there. Very implement for you. students had to present that uh, presentation twice in the class so that and in, with immediate feedback so that they got it. Uh, just a glimpse of the learning outcomes what we measure. So we have three uh, broad sections of measuring. One is what we uh, I uh, explained to you about assessment that whether students have improved by a grade at least. So we have seen 90% of students have improved by one grade in report writing and presentation. Um, we ask the students whether they like the course, right? Whether they like the online component, the trainer component. Actually, we ask them many times during the course so that we get that feedback of even tuning the course or changing the course in between. So we got very positive feedback around 4.7 uh, rating. And we also see that whether students are taking efforts to complete the course. Many times we get uh, a complaint from the professors that students don't take that much effort these days. So uh, we make sure that even at home on mobile, students should not feel that you know it's okay to just uh, uh, flunk or just bung these classes. In Solapur University, we have got the highest completion rate ever. It's 93% students have completed the course. What it means that these main students have attended three Sundays workshops and completed around 20 hours of online course. Okay, so they have spent that much time over three months. Around 246 students out of 327 completed entire course. So they finished with 100%. Okay, so what we feel is that you know when they take that much effort, obviously they will improve, right? I mean it's just a matter of taking effort. English is not something called rocket science, right? It's just a matter of taking effort. So we make sure that they are completing the course, they are taking that much effort. If not, then what can we do? And here I would like to con uh, you know, mention that we had coordinators from each department so that we used to give them this weekly report so that which students are not performing, which students are taking it very lightly. So uh, these coordinators were helping us uh, you know, take push students actually. Yeah, so I think back from uh, students speaking uh, here <coughs> itself, uh, what I would like to you know end this seminar is with that this was just one semester for us uh, and the journey continues for us with uh, Solapur University. Just last week we had such session in our office where we um, uh, oriented the new, I mean trainers for the next uh, course in this semester and we had around three hours discussion. 
uh, on the types of students we are uh, uh, you know finding in Solapur University. Uh, we we told that you know they are they are from basic level of English, but the hunger to learn is very high, and you know the trainers can expect uh, a lot of questions, a lot of curiosity from the students. We also made sure that each trainer knows how to take our assessments, what uh, activities they should do. And we take such sessions before starting on the course, and our course actually starting from tomorrow, whole Sunday, around 200 students are going. Spend entire Sunday with us tomorrow, and uh, you know, journey continues for us uh, uh, with Solapur University. I think I'll just go back to uh, the thought I started with. We uh, words might have set a vision for 20,000 students in this year as our oath uh, and as our commitment to uh, Swami Vivekananda Ji. I would like to encourage all of students, all of the uh, educators here, professors, principals here, to take this problem very seriously. I think all of you have got our brochure, my card. I would like to talk to you. I would like to have a discussion with you. How can I help? Uh, how can we help uh, students from your colleges? We, uh, as I said, we have a customization in our course. So we would like to get thoughts from you and how the problems your students are so, uh, getting. What do we see in the, uh, them, and how can we help? Uh, students. So I'll uh, end that uh, spot and uh, next year, uh, this day, uh, we should be having uh, a celebration of at least 5,000 students from Solapur. I will leave uh, with that uh, dream here. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you.